Hello guys, this is Brian here with the update. Um, I was hospitalized uh, for a serious health issue. And I finally, I finally have the hospital, so let me tell you the story. Today is January the 22nd, 2016. Today is Friday. i um, been in the hospital for several days. I'm finally out, so I can let me tell you the story. <laughs> um, back on, what is it, Thursday at 3 o'clock in the morning, January the 14th um, I was sleeping in the recliner because you know obviously I had surgery and can't sleep in bed so 2 or 3 in the morning I, I woke up in severe stomach pain right underneath, the, under, right underneath the chest above the stomach severe pain just like I had earlier in 2015 but worse just, I mean I just woke up from a dead sleep I got jerked out of that chair that fast. I had like I almost uh, had my panic attack, severe pain. Um, that definitely was not going to go away anytime soon, and just just just, just sweating to death. Uh, so they rushed me to the emergency room. They did a whole bunch of EK, EKGs to make sure it wasn't a heart attack, and it wasn't. Um, however, my heart rate was, like, was extremely high. So the next thing they, you know, uh, explain, you know, I'm, you know, I, I think it's a stomach ulcer. So I told them about that, and they think that's what they think as well, stomach ulcer. So they said, let's do a CT scan, but we have to get you to drink this barium. Now, mind you, this was three o'clock in the morning, and they gave me lots of drugs and boy, barium. Ugh. So I drink the barium. They did the CT scan and it came back negative for a uh, ulcer. Thank God. Um, then they were shifting, thinking oh, it's a blood clot. They think it's a blood clot because I had surgery back in December. Uh, so because I was still still having severe pain, and they, they say that let's let, I'm going to admit you to the hospital. We can't do two CT scans too close to each other. We had to have a 12-hour period because it could damage your kidneys. The contrast in the barium can. Um, because the blood clot one, you don't drink barium. It's contrast to the IV. So that I was admitted to the hospital. Also because I had very high heart rate and my blood pressure was high um, during this time because of all this pain I was experiencing. But it took them a while to get me actually admitted to the hospital because the, they were full. So I probably did not get into the actual hospital, a bed in the hospital until 12 or 1 on Friday afternoon. Uh, so this was, you know, I was arrived there Thursday, 3 o'clock in the morning. So, you know, I, was, I spent lots of time in the emergency room. <laughs> but they, you know, they gave me enough drugs to try to make me comfortable. Uh, so I finally, I finally woke up and it was time for the CT scan. And... You know, like an hour or two later, they came back and negative for a blood clot. Thank God. By doing this time, I was getting a whole bunch of uh, blood thingers uh, uh, in the stomach to make you know just to make sure it wasn't a blood clot. Um. So now they're thinking it is a stomach. Now they're now they're coming back thinking it's a it's a stomach ulcer. So the hospitalist doctor came back and explained it's not a blood clot, but we want to call it the GI team in and do a scope on you to make sure it is not a stomach ulcer or an ulcer anywhere in your, you know, in the insides. Uh, so the GI doctor came around, and luckily it's the same people, the same practice that I go to. Uh, so I, you know, I know them pretty well. But the GI doctor who came said he's not the one who's going to do the scope. It's the other GI doctor, uh, which I seen her before once or twice when my GI doctor, my regular GI doctor, was out of town a couple of years ago. So I, re I remember her, and I and I liked her because she's real nice. She said, and she said, because you're a gastric bypass patient, let's do a scope. And I said, okay, is it the kind that they go down the math? She said, yes. So I said, oh, well, I had those before. She said, yeah, because I'm looking at your medical record. Um, and and she said, well, we're going to do this tomorrow morning, Saturday morning. Uh, get the, uh, you know, um, I'll come here in a year and, and tell you how long, you know, what, you know, once I get here in the morning, I'll tell you when it's going to happen. So you call your family members in if you want them to come here. 
and they finally gave me lots of drugs, and I finally got some sleep that did that Friday night. Now, Friday around one o'clock, I mean Saturday at one o'clock in the morning, intestinal cramping started happening in diarrhea, lots of it. And the nurse told me it's from the barium that I drank from the previous day, you know, from Thursday. Some patients had that reaction to them. Uh, so, okay. Uh, five o'clock in the morning came. I had severe edema cramping and diarrhea like there was no tomorrow. Uh, I didn't get no sleep. I was in, the, in and out of the bathroom constantly. The hospitalist doctor came around at six uh, at uh, uh, seven. Uh, was it seven or eight o'clock in the morning? And I uh, and I kind of told her, you know, I think we might want to cancel this procedure because I'm having this gut, you know, this diarrhea and and tell some cramping problem. And she they, she also chopped it up to barbarian. I said I'm afraid that they may not have a bathroom close by. I mean, I'm literally can't stay out of the bathroom. And I also had them unhook the IV because I told them I can't drag this IV, unplug it from the wall and drag this IV pole into the bathroom fast enough. Uh, she said, you, I, I give you some more drug, you know, I give you some uh, medicine that will actually s try to relax the gut and, and give you, uh, a, you know, a good dose of Imodium. Uh, and, and beforehand, they gave me liquid lidocaine, carafate, and all this, and they were still giving me carafate. That's nasty. Um, so the GI doctor came around, and, and, I, and I told her the same thing, and she said, well, we, you know, it might be the barium. Um, or a virus, um, stomach virus. Um, so they did a scope, and I was just knocked out for less than five to ten, you know, less than thirty minutes. Um, and luckily they let me stay in my own hospital bed because they, they came to my room and got the hospital bed and drilled me up to the GI thingy. Um, I've been there before, so, um, um, so I, you know, no problem. Um, she, she said everything looks fine. My pouch looks good. Um, no, no ulcers or, or tears or bleeding anywhere. So they think it's a virus, um, and then I went back to my room, and a couple hours later, you know, in the afternoon, everything was okay, and that diarrhea and intestinal cramp started right back up. Um, and then you know, by this time they put the IV, you know, they left the IV in from the procedure, and you know, they you know they hooked the IV back up since I had that procedure. And that night, uh, it started really bad. I mean, severely bad. Um, to the point that they could tell I was getting severely dehydrated, even though I had an IV in. Um, during those AM hours, I have never spent that kind of time in the bathroom in my life. I mean, I had gone to the bathroom so many times. They had to give me a whole bunch of rolls of toilet paper. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I have never experienced that in my life. Um, and then you know, here it is Sunday. Finally, the hospital doctor came around and explained. You know, I don't think this is from barium. I think there's something wrong here. Uh, she said, "Well, I'm gonna order a stool sample." So <laughs> I said, oh, "Fine, that's okay. I can provide you a bunch of stool samples. <laughs> Doesn't have a problem one bit at all." But then this whole time they keep talking up it was barium. I know, and in my in my heart, I don't think it was barium that caused that caused that dairy, and I and, and I was right. And you know, by this time they gave me muscle relaxers to try to relax the gut. It didn't help. They gave me a whole bunch of pain medicine, but it, it still the cramping was still going on. Um. It, you know, they almost got me to the point of being drugged up, but, you know, I wanted to be drugged up because I was in severe pain, but I was afraid I'd be drugged up enough not to know I had to go to the bathroom, you know, but luckily, you know, I, you know, I was aware, because sometimes, you know, if you've ever been to a nursery room or a, doc or a hospital, they give you too much drugs and, and you get conked out and you don't, and, you know, you don't know what's going on, and luckily I was aware of what was going on, thank God. 
Uh, and then, and, and also, since I was admitted to the hospital, I had a heart thing on my chest, all these little stickers, things that mounted in my heart, right, uh, wirelessly. And they had me on a big jump hospital gown because of that. Um, so that, you know, you have to get that out of the way before you go into the bathroom, like a big tent. <laughs> um, a couple hours later, Sunday, they, they finally... I heard, well, let me back up. I heard all this banging against my door, on the hospital door. I said, what the hell's going on? Because it was open, and but banging was going on. And they were hanging something on the hospital door. Well, because I kind of thought the banging was maybe somebody, maybe there was a kid outside playing with the door or something. You know? Um, because the way I, the Presbyterian Hospital here in Rockwell was set up is, you go up down a long hall, it's like the hospital and the inpatient rooms are kind of separate from each other almost. So you go down the long hallway to get to the patient rooms, but the hospital is kind of a little bit, they're connected, but they're kind of separate where you have your outpatient procedures and inpatient with the operating room and the waiting rooms are, they're kind of separate from each other. But you go the little down, down the hall, the long hallway, then the first thing you, you get to the long hallways is is uh, labor and delivery on the left, but you continue to go straight, and you you, you then you enter the uh, post surgical um, uh, hospital rooms with the post surgical patients go. Well, I was in the, one of those rooms, I, I guess, because you know the place was all booked up, so they put you wherever you they have an open bed. Usually, because when I had my uh, uh, pneumonia, I was in the uh, observation uh, on the second floor for observation. Um, so I was on the post-surgical unit. So I thought, well, maybe a kid was playing with the door or something. Because you can hear people go back and forth all day long. But then they opened my hospital door and I saw something that they were hanging on, on the door. And I asked them, well, what's going on? Because I asked them, what's going on? And, and I heard my nurse. She said, I'll tell you in a second. We're, going, we're getting this set up here. It turned out to be... Uh, they were putting, they call it contact precaution procedures in place. Which if you've ever been in the hospital and some rooms have this big giant cabinet hanging from the door with like a little door or, or a shelf, it has gloves and gowns and little um, masks and hats. That's what the little thing looked like. Because I've seen it when they finally opened the door. And the nurse said, uh, the doctor's coming back in, in an hour, but I'm going to tell you some, uh, um, your, your test, your stool sample came back positive for C. diff. And she kind of explained a little bit to me about the doctor. She said the doctor will come back and explain more detailed. She said, you cannot let anyone enter this hospital room without being with that gown on, gloves on, and they cannot touch any, they uh, absolutely do not let them eat after you, touch anything you know, the family members who come and visit, and do not, absolutely do not let them use your bathroom, because you have C. diff. But the doctor will be back. Um, and the doctor came around, and she explained to me uh, what C. diff is. It's a bacteria infection of the intestines that causes severe diarrhea. I, I said, I told you it wasn't that barium. <laughs> um, she said, it's it's... It's spread by people not washing their hands after using the restroom. The fecal matter on their hands uh, and touching surfaces. Uh, she said it's sometimes spread from patient from patient to doctor, doctor to patient. Uh, sometimes that happens. Um, she said, in my particular case, they think it was caused from. Um, I was taking antibiotics for my surgery, for my thigh lift, and somehow I touched a surface, you know, I could, uh, you know, inside of a restaurant, um, somebody here in the house, anywhere, you know, anywhere I touched a surface, and that and virus got, on, get, got into me, and my gut could not fight it off because I had that antibiotics, and that, that the antibiotics sometimes will kill off the good bacteria. So it throws off the balance of your gut. Um, she says sometimes uh, it can happen uh, by people, you know, like in a restaurant, not washing their hands, the employees not washing their hands and touching your food. Uh, 
I mean, it could, it just could, you know, it'd be various reasons, but the thinking is because and normally somebody can, normally your system can fight this off and you wouldn't know you had it without any symptoms. Uh, because, but since in my particular case, I had antibiotics for my surgery, my, my immune system could not fight it off. It threw the bounce off in my gut. Uh, she and she radiated everything, but the nurse said, "Do not let anyone come in your hospital room um, without gloves on and a ho and that special gown that they have to like. It looks like a trash bag, basically, you know, plastic gown. Uh, it's not spread by air or breathing, so they don't have to wear any masks. It's just by t contact, touch of contact." Um, uh, and and she said, don't let you know, don't let your family use your bathroom or anything like that. Um, just you know, and of course I can't leave the hospital room now. Um, ugh, kind of scared me. I mean, it really did. And she said, Do you, I'm gonna give you some. We're gonna go, we're gonna get you on IV anti good antibiotics for the, that will treat this, and you you will feel better. Uh, but we have to stop the emodium. We have to let it get out of your system. But we will give you drugs that will stop the you know try to stop the cramping. But we have to let the diarrhea get out of your system. Um. And. And that was Sunday. Monday came around. I still had diarrhea, but it was it was slowing down. But I still had severe intestinal cramping. And of course, you know, my family came back. My family came every single day. And, you know, they bring me tea from Sonic or you know drinks from the house. And and and, uh, and I told them, y'all can't because my well, my grandma what she did she came around dinner time. So I wasn't alone, and she ate my desserts. Um, this is the hospital I got, uh, Presbyterian here in Rockwell, they have some good hospital food. Very good hospital food. It's not like, it's not like in the old days. I mean, they actually have a chef there that cooks everything. So it's pretty good, you know, pretty good stuff. Um, so she always had my dessert and bread, whatever I, whatever I didn't eat, because I wasn't very hungry during this whole entire episode of the hospitalization. Um... And then that Monday night, that you know, because I had antibiotics, and that Monday night I could not. Of course, going to the bathroom constantly, and then I was not have. I was almost starting to have an allergic reaction because I was starting to get real itchy from head to from from my face into my mid chest, just itchy. And of course, I you know that has happened before when they give me too, too much drugs or morphine can can do that without Benadryl. So they give me some Benadryl. And, and and antibiotics and more pain medicine, because I was actually worried about before I had diarrhea. I actually thought the opposite effect would happen with me. We have too much pain medicine. I thought I was going to have severe constipation, because that has happened to me after my kidney stone surgery. That they gave me so much pain medicine that it hurt to to get that out of your you know go to the number two. It hurt really badly. Severe constipation, so no, thank you. So either you know, I was really worried about that. Um, so Monday, Monday, you know, early a.m. Tuesday was having all this issue. And by the way, I have never watched so much TV in my life. <laughs> I, I finally got hooked on this, uh, you know, cops. That TV show, cops. I I got hooked on that, watching that all day on. Um, uh, was it the FX channel or something or a SPAC channel? Um, I also got into the other series that comes on after Cops. I don't know if it's on anymore. Or it, I think it was just reruns because I've seen it before. Uh, jail, um, where um, they uh, film jail personnel dealing with people. <laughs> I, I got into that, and one day I was watching Law and Order all damn day. Uh, you know. Why I was on that label when I wasn't zonked out or in the bathroom. Um, Tuesday came around, my diary had changed from watery to solid finally, putting consistency if you want to know the truth. Uh, but still, lots of abdominal cramping, lots of drugs, antibiotics, Benadryl. 
uh, can't leave the hospital room, getting cranky, um, getting bitchy. Um, um, like I said, I was allowed to have a, my family came in to visit. They they were allowed to come in and visit, but they did they did they did have to put the stuff on. Um, and my grandma didn't think she bought a drink in that room. I said, "Don't throw that in trash. You can't drink that because it touched a surface that I may have touched." Um. And then one of the technicians came in there without wearing gloves. And and I said something to that because, you know, that's exactly how things can spread. If somebody did not follow their direct procedures, because uh, they told me to report that to anyone, to report that to the the, uh, the head person there. Uh, the, because during this time, the infectious disease person came and saw me, and they also told me, and they, he saw me every day, and I told him about that because well, I said, one of your technicians came here without wearing gloves. That's, that's may have, you know, that, I mean, what, what happens if he touches another patient and, and gets it? And they said they will deal with that immediately. And I never saw that guy, I mean, I never saw that technician ever again. Um, but, you know, you're in the hospital, you never get any damn sleep. They wake you up all, uh, uh, once you do get any sleep, they wake you up at all, at all hours in the morning. Uh, like one o'clock in the morning, you get blood pressure, temperature, heart rate, and all of that. Um, blood work. Um, then they start that again at four o'clock in the morning. Then they wake you up at seven o'clock in the morning at shift change. Because at my particular hospital, they come in the room and and the t at, you know seven o'clock a.m. and seven p.m. They you know they tell you they give the report to the new person that was taken over in the hospital room and you know and answering any questions that I might have. But once they put that precaution, uh, contact precaution, and they just they, they just opened the door and stood in the hallway, you know, just because they didn't want to gown up and put gloves on. Um, the food service people stopped delivering my food. The nurse started doing that. Um, it was all kinds of weird things going on. Tuesday, another day, and the hospital doctor finally came around at so you know like late evening. Uh, she said, well, if you feel well enough, you can make it to go home tomorrow. I said, okay, well, I'm going to get out of here. <laughs> and I finally get to go home. I finally got to go home on Wednesday. And before I was discharged, they said, throw away anything that's in this room that, you know, like toothbrush, you know, like toothpaste, toothbrush, you know, toiletries. Throw that stuff out in trash. Um throw away any underwear that you have worn since you've been here. You know, just throw that stuff out in, in the trash. Um, when you get home, double double wash your clothing that you have in this room. Because my family bought me a suitcase, so I had, you know, a couple pairs of sh pants and, sh and shirts up there. Um, you know, I'd only wear one or two short, uh, shorts before, I mean, shirts before they made me wear the uh, thing for the heart rate thing on the hospital gown. Um, so doing laundry with that. Um, everything's okay. Uh, she's the, they say it's it's gonna get better every day, which it is. They can, they sent me home with antibiotics to take, pain medicine, um, bentil to take, which I already took bentil, but they gave me a stronger do, a double do, a stronger dose and, and take two. Um, they said just follow up with the, with my primary care doctor. I thought they would tell me to follow up with the with the gastric GI doctor, uh, but since I have the crossbow shield now, HMO, I have to follow up with the primary care doctor, which I have an appointment with them on next Wednesday. I don't know if I'm gonna go or not. If I'm if I feel good enough, I, I don't know. I think I should follow up with him. I guess. Um, they say the only way you know 100% for sure that you don't have C diff anymore is you have regular bowel movements, no more cramping, but. Scientifically, you they have to do another stool test to make sure. Um, what else? While I was in the hospital, all things came in the mail for me from Blue Cross. Uh, the HMO referrals were approved for my pain management doctor. I had to see for the discs in my neck. Also, uh, the neurosurgeon thing was approved. So, I, so my game plan is I'm going to see the neurosurgeon at first to see what they say. Because a neurologist who discovered the bulging disc in my neck, 
they wasn't for sure if the neurosurgeon would do the uh, shots in the neck or the pain management doctor. And also the uh, eye specialist was approved automatically. Um, so we shall see on, like, on next week what the primary care doctor has to say about all of this. Next week I go to the plastic surgeon, plastic surgeon office too for a follow up. Um, which I, I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna call them and see if I should po postpone that or about because I have this um, or not. I, I don't know. I have to call them and ask them what they want to do because ne next week it was my last week before I go back to work because I go back to work on February the first. Um, and during this time, I was in the hospital. I was babying my scar, you know, my incisions. I put Vaseline on it. Then it kind of got red and a little bit irritated. So I called the plastic surgeon's office be uh, Friday and let them know it was kind of getting uh, irritated. And they said, just, you know, stop the Vaseline for a while and see what it does. Um, but other than that, I'm doing okay now. I feel a lot better, but I still have a little bit of intestinal cramping. Uh, the diarrhea has stopped, so now I'm having regular bad movements. Uh, so now I know that the and the antibiotics that they gave me is working. Um, so how many days is that? Let's say Thursday, but six five to six days in the hospital. <sighs> I can imagine how much that's going to cost. Well, luckily I remember my pocket, but I, I can easily guess this is going to be around twenty five to thirty thousand dollars easy. Because I know, like a CAT scan, I know that's about five thousand dollars each. I had two, so that's ten. Uh, that procedure I had was another five, so that's uh, fifteen. And now the extra drugs and hospital care I got, that's probably another ten to fifteen thousand dollars. And you know, you know, of course they charge the hospital, you know, they charge the insurance company per day that you're there for the room. That's a, probably two thousand um, dollars. I don't know. Luckily, I have insurance. That's all I gotta say. Um, but other than that, I'm doing okay. Um, I'll, of course, I've been washing my hands so much. My hands are raw now, <laughs> ever since they told me about all this. Um, but uh, well, you know, ever since I don't, you know, always I wash your hands after you use the restroom. But now, you know, since they told me how to see it, they told me wash your hands constantly. Um, even though you don't even use your restroom, just wash your hands are you know constantly. Um, if you change your can't just wash your hands. So you know it's just really it's scary to have that. I and I knew in my heart that it, that my my intestinal pain was not from burying. I I knew that from the get go. I I don't know if because after because it kind of went that pain kind of. Then that time before that procedure, my pain kind of shifted from the top of my stomach to into the gut. So I don't know if it was a stomach virus and it turned into C. diff. Um, because, you know, I could touch something in the hospital and got that, you know. I don't know. And, and, I, and they told me that since I had that pain before, um, that my my immune system was able to fight it off before but since I was on antibiotics for my surgery it throws off the it throws off the good balance the balance of your bacteria in your gut off and my immune system was not able to fight it off so that's what they're thinking that's why it has what caused all of this I mean like I could have touched a door handle and got this um, or I could have got it from the doctor's office I went to the plastic surgeon's office um, but just wash my hands constantly um, washing everything twice, um, but then I'm doing okay. Um, bored to death. <laughs> I was bored to death to begin with before I was in the hospital. Because um, you know you can own it. I, I was gonna make videos in because uh, I had the laptop. I was gonna make videos in the hospital because I had Wi-Fi. But hell, I can't remember the stupid YouTube uh, username. Uh, username and name. Uh, I mean, stupid. Password. Um, for some off reason. 
to, you know, I was going to make videos to pass the time, but I just got to remember that stupid YouTube password. Um, so the game plan is to follow up with the promo code doctor, see what he says if I have to go to the GI doctor or not. Um, other than that, I'm doing okay. Um, nothing else is going on around here. Oh, they did tell me if I do have any severe cramping again, to go back to the emergency room and, and get that treated immediately. Don't don't pussyfoot around with that. Um, and let them know that you have C diff so they can treat treat you right. If you have any questions, comments, please post it below. Love to hear from you.